lot of you know, hopefully, that one day Jesus is going to come back, whether we like it or not. Right? There is no option. When he came the first time, <coughs> his mission was different. His mission was to come and die as a substitute of mankind's sin, right? He came to take that place of a sinner. He, who didn't have any sin, took upon the sin of mankind. After which, nobody has to do anything to get rid of their sin. <clears throat> Nothing at all. But there needs to be one thing to do. That you believe in the act of that cross. And whoever believes, they are saved at that moment in time for eternity. And then, for all those who are saved, we are supposed to always be ready to meet him. Right? Nobody will escape, but some of them will be glad, some of them will be sad, some of them will be mad that he came back. <laughs> All of this will happen. Bible is two parts, right? One is the Old Testament and the other one is the New Testament. Old Testament is before the birth of Lord Jesus Christ and the New Testament is after his birth. It starts with his birth, his life, his death, his resurrection and his ascension. He's gone away and then with an assurance that he comes back. And what is going to happen? And that is the last book of the Bible, which is Revelation, right? The things that are yet to happen. There are so many signs. There are so many things that are happening. This generation has seen a lot of things that no other generation has seen. So much has been changing before our eyes. A lot of things are happening which are pointing that his coming is way too close. Be it the earthquakes, be it the wars that are happening, blame it on economy and so on and so forth. What has happening happened in Greece just about a few weeks back? They're in such trouble. If you're not followed the papers, you, you followed? Yes, no? Bahubali? Uh, that we will know. And that, that is how much is the first day's sale of Bahubali, immediately you'll give the answer. I will not ask anyways. Because that is latest. People are getting Bali, but that, that nobody bothers. But there is so much of hype about. You know. So we don't know what is important to follow, what is not important to follow. And there are so many things that are happening. And if you are not sensitive, <coughs> then we will miss the boat, so to say. And in Greece, they are in such financial crisis. A country, think about it. You think banks are safe and secure? Talk to the people in Greece, they'll tell you. There is money in their account, but they can't withdraw. And Bible has told this long time back. The maximum limit is 60 euros per day. And for retired people, they made it 120 euros per day. I don't know the latest. And that is what they can take. So in the Old Testament, <coughs> there are a lot of Bible characters who in a way represented Christ. And we will get to the message quickly, keeping this in mind. <coughs> Moses represented Christ. Isaac represented Christ. Joseph represented Christ. David represented Christ. <clears throat> and we will just look at King David and one part in, in one passage. I'll give you the background so that you could relate to it and we will quickly get into it. The theme is, you know, David, for those who probably don't know, while most of you should know, <clears throat> the first king of Israel was Saul. And Saul was a choice of people, not choice of God. That is the biggest difference. 
because the israelites compared themselves with other kingdoms and every other kingdom had a king and these guys said we don't have a king and god was leading them through prophets prophets were the representatives of god but these people wanted a similar representation peer pressure got it every organization has a ceo and if we don't have a ceo we'll think no what is this organization there is no head <laughs> right so they said we need a king and and god said you know god is wonderful you think god doesn't give no he gives the problem is if he gives what he is not supposed to give it will become a problem to us don't feel excited about i got it from god you troubled him so much that he had to give <laughs> and that is what we learn when we look at his lives many things that they got were not given wholeheartedly by him like parents as parents we give certain things to our children why just to get rid of that situation if we walk up to vijeta and while you are paying at the counter and generally all these goodies will be just near the cash counter no because any which place will come there kids are there with us chocolates will be exactly there all the toys will be there that is called the point of sale in marketing strategically they are placed and all hell will break loose because till that time you kind of and avoided this fellow but finally he is standing beside you and you will say mm. then what will you do bahubali 2 why why i am talking of bahubali there so much that was hyped in the paper and whatsapp messages somebody put up sbi loans will be given to buy tickets of bahubali <laughs> because of the black marketing i believe now don't not don't go and see that there are better things to do <laughs> yeah. so so how just to get rid of that uh, embarrassing situation if he or she is bringing down the roof of vijayata market it's okay later on let me struggle with cough and cold of this fellow but let me just buy and move on right so they said we need a king and god gave king saul and king saul did something which he as a king of some supposed to do back in old testament times when it came to worship it was only supposed to be done by the prophets and samuel was supposed to come but samuel got late on purpose and king Saul gave the offering and that is when he lost the kingdom long story short the next king was god's choice who replaced who king Saul and his name is david these are some basics of bible <laughs> right king david <clears throat> a lot of things happened in david's life the limited time that we have Saul was still the king David was a young boy but he was already anointed back when he was a shepherd boy Samuel came and anointed and he came and told Saul that your kingdom is gone God has already appointed he didn't know later on he came to know when David got into his house when he killed Goliath and all of that initially Saul was so happy but the moment David's name you know started to go out and they were praising david more than saul saul's ego came that's the problem right and then finally when david became the king and all of that lot of things have happened there was a revolt in david's own family and who turned against him is his own son absalom and david runs away and at that point in time people took sides like always right two parties there are people who followed absalom there are people who followed david and david is somewhere away from the kingdom and finally i'm giving you all this i know finally absalom dies and david like a father knowing pretty much that absalom was behind his life and his throne yet cries to god beautiful that shows the heart of the father he says god you should have taken me in the place of my son 
which father will do that david cried and all the people were surprised and, and they came to him and some of them actually started to uh, you know uh, kind of get upset saying that why are you crying <laughs> this son of yours was the one who was about to take your life he is the one who divided this kingdom he was behind your throne you are crying about him it is high time that you stop crying and come back because people are waiting for you to get back through the throne now why did i tell all of this the point is the message is just about that now david is coming back as the king and when this division happened when somebody were with david and some of them were with absalom now he is the king for everybody not everybody was happy when he is coming back now power is there no right so it is the general scare if you have not done something right now you know when he comes back there will be a problem and let us link it up to jesus coming back as the king of kings and the lord of lords as i told in the beginning when jesus comes back everybody should face the point is each one of us including me how will we face him when he comes back there are five people in the past passages that we're going to meditate who are facing king david coming back after when absalom died his own son who rebelled against him died he is coming back but when he was running for his life when he went into the wilderness and those caves and all of that there were people who did certain things now they some of them did good some of them did bad and now all of them know that he is coming back that is the background and each one of them responds and reacts in different ways and it is for us to just introspect ourselves when the king of kings and the lord of lord comes back in which category will you fall we will fall in one of them two people i am putting in one category and the rest four uh, rest three in other three categories so there are four responses four reactions when david is coming back we will pick up this story from second samuel chapter 19 uh, 19 second samuel chapter 19 just to give you a background of the five people the first category is two people and the first one we could so we could see uh, if we go to uh, second samuel chapter 19 verse 16 onwards we will just see that part now this is one of the one of one of the five and shimi the son of jera a benjamite who was from behurim hurried and came down with the men of juda to meet king david king david now what is this guy's background we will have to go to the 16th chapter from verses 1 to 4 of second samuel and <clears throat> when when david left jerusalem uh, this is the other guy ziba sorry so that's fine when david was a little past the top of the mountain there was ziba the, the servant of mephibosheth mephibosheth is the son of king saul and uh, who met him with a couple of saddle donkeys and on 200 loaves of bread 100 raisin and so on and so forth so since we have very limited time let me just tell what this guy has done when when david left jerusalem he was with Mep- mephibosheth and this guy sent some food to david and there's a lot that happens but when he sends this food david asks about mephibosheth how is he and he presents a wrong picture of mephibosheth and since david is away this guy takes over all that belongs to mephibosheth so he is somebody who told some lies and deceived david what he presented to david was not correct when he went away that was ziba and when david 
came back this guy is worried that is the first category because he was not truthful not truthful that is the first category or one category of people when jesus comes back they will be worried as to how he is going to treat them is there anybody here if at all he comes back today will you be in that worried category because you have not given your life to him you don't know him personally you haven't lived the lived the life that is truthful and so on and so forth maybe you are saved but still you are not living up to what his calling is there are a lot of people who are saved but are not living lives according to that calling and a lot of people who are saved don't even understand what that calling is they are just living a life as 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 nominal christians as ritualistic christians probably somewhere you you repented hopefully so you have that assurance of salvation but after that you haven't done really anything to the lord then you will be in that worried category ziba was worried the second person is shimi and if we go to the fifth verse of the of the 16th chapter here is another other other person who is about to meet david when he is coming back second samuel verse 16 and here is it whose name was shimi he came out and he started cursing david continuously let's go to the next verse he not only cursed and he threw stones at david and all the servants of king david so this is the second guy the first one was a one on the face of it appeared as if he was helping david he sent food he was mephibosheth servant but he spoke ill about mephibosheth and he took away the entire property of mephibosheth so he was not truthful so now david is coming back as a king and he is worried the second one is shimai and this guy outrightly cursed david when he was running away when he was running away this fellow felt that david will never come back as a king absalom will be the king so he said you know he kept cursing and and one of uh, david's um, strong man in that passage we don't have time to read all of that go home and read it's very interesting he tells david i will go and kill this fellow and david says no it's amazing david had an opportunity to kill saul previously but he didn't he says i will you don't have to do anything let him curse let him do whatever he wants he started cursing him he started throwing stones now david is coming back so shimai is about to meet meet him in in the in the 19th chapter so these two people fall in that that category of worried people because they were guilty of not treating david the way he is supposed to be treated and if any one of you is guilty and have not been treating him as the god of your life as the one who has given everything for you if you're not living a life that is bringing honor and glory to him if you're living a selfish life or you've gone to the extreme of you know just blaming him for certain things in your life there are there are people who are who on the face of it say that they have believed in in god but yet when certain things don't happen when god doesn't meet your expectation you end up blaming him and this guy goes to the extent of cursing and stowing thrones but yet when he is coming back these two people meet but they are worried what will happen that is that is the first category of people the second one is uh, the one who is waiting for david the one who is waiting for david <clears throat> and uh, this is in was 19 and 20 was 19 and 20 we will have to go to the 16th chapter second samuel 16th chapter was 19 go to the 20th verse i oh, know go to the go to the 19th chapter
and we will go to verse 24 straight. Verse 24, please. Right. Now Mephibosheth, the son of Saul, came down to meet King David. Who was Mephibosheth? Mephibosheth was misrepresented by Ziba. Right? But Mephibosheth is coming to meet David. And he had not cared for his feet or trimmed his mustache or washed his clothes from the day the king has departed until the day he returned. What does it teach? That means he didn't take care of himself. That means he has been waiting, anxiously waiting, believing fully that someday David is going to come back. That is what Mephibosheth teaches us. This is the second category of people. One category is, who are they? Worried people. The second category is waiting people. And we need to be in this category. God told, be watchful, right? Be watchful and pray. For the day of the Lord is soon. And we need to be waiting. Remember the parable of ten virgins, right? Five of them were wise, five of them were foolish, right? All of them were waiting for the bridegroom to come. That was fine. But as they kept waiting, there was a delay. And then they went out to get oil. And by the time they went to get oil, and by the time they came back, the bridegroom had come, and the wise virgins went inside, and the door was closed. After which, they kept knocking and telling all of that. But the door was never opened. And the same thing will happen. If you don't give your life to the Lord, I am telling you, you will be left out. And we will see that at the end. And Mephibosheth, this verse says that he was somebody who has been waiting and waiting for the king to come. And all those who have given their life to the Lord should have only one desire, that is to wait for his coming. And we need to be prepared to meet him. We need to be ready to meet him. Until then, we wait for his coming. That is the second category. And if we go to verse 31 of the same chapter, it's a long chapter, you can go home and read, you will find Barzillia. And this guy, if you go to the next verse. Now Barzillia was a very aged man, 80 years old, and he had provided the king with supplies while he stayed, for he was a rich man. When David went away, look at his age. What is his age? 80 years old. He was a very aged man, but he was sending food and he was doing something for King David when he was away. What does this teach us? He was somebody who was working. Working. And each one of us is called to work for him. The greatest job that each one of us has is to work for the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. That is the greatest job. Because there is both salary and bonus guaranteed, provided we work. Salary is here, bonus is there. Where? In Gachibolia? No. <laughs> Up there. We are working for the chief eternal officer, as I always think of him. He is, that is the CEO I work for. Jesus Christ is the chief eternal officer who recruits Every day, every minute. Irrespective of whichever background you come from. Yes, I keep telling it many years. Irrespective of whatever age category. Age, no restriction. Experience, no restriction. Nothing at all. You put up fake certificates and all of that wherever you are, he says, fine, now you stop doing that, come to me, I'll give you the best of the job. And then he will reward provided we work. There is one beautiful parable which Jesus told. It amazes me. 
there is this master of the vineyard and he wants workers and he goes into the market and he finds people it, time and again there's one word that comes they were idle back in jesus time and even now you will find lot of people idle <laughs> they were there and and this guy goes and asks you know um don't you have any work so nobody hired us this is one standard dialogue no i kept applying no job came to me as if you start a birla sun nobody took me <laughs> nobody hired he says come he didn't check their credentials he says come with me early in the morning <clears throat> come with me and he'll say i'll give you one day another he tells them the wage not that he didn't set the expectation like many a times no this happens in the when i when i meet up other believer friends i'm still in the corporate world you know one big big problem is when we get to know the salary of our colleague till then life will be fine honestly i'm telling you life will be fine the moment you will get to know great depression actually i work more i knew my boss takes care of me <laughs> my only question is when they spoke to you during interview time and when they made the offer were you not happy if you're not happy that was the time for you to speak and say i cannot work for this salary but after you've agreed maybe your friend came the next day <laughs> he got 10% more but <laughs> that is not your problem but that is my problem the same thing happened in jesus time early in the morning for one dinner then next i forget the times but four or five times he goes 9 o'clock he goes into the market he finds again people <laughs> he says will you work he say yes he will say whatever is right from next batch it's built from next batch he will not tell what he is going to give he says whatever is right which i feel is right i'll give it to you this one has agreed expectation set finally one hour before the shift is over <laughs> one more batch now the payment time has come unfortunately it starts from last the one who joined one hour before also got the same wage which was promised to the one who came in the morning one day another what will you think immediately calculator goes in the mind no oh for one hour i worked for eight hours so i'll get eight times he got the same amount <laughs> there was a big issue there was a fight and they called him unjust they said they this is not right the only question is asked haven't i not told you that i will did i not pay what i told that i pay i can do whatever with my money whose was the money the money was the masters right so god gives us according to his wisdom our only job is to work for him compensation is his problem so barzilla at the age of 80 he had so much love towards king david and king david doesn't have a kingdom now he's gone away so he is working and sending beautiful lesson and we are supposed to work for him with all our heart and that is what is the new testament command whatever you do do it as unto the lord that is what i keep telling young people or wherever i go if you are a student study as if you are studying for your parents sir then we will not study you will be in my category because it was a misery and i had to do something because my dad was in the same school my mom was in the same school teachers children what marks they are getting that's another problem so for them i had to do something somehow i passed grace of god was there behind somewhere right but after we have come to know him as our savior whatever we do we need to do it what as unto the lord god has kept me in this college so i will study so that he gets a good name God has kept me in this at the workplace I will work even though if my boss doesn't give me the right rating I will do that because I am doing it as unto the Lord 
you're a housewife taking care of everything at, at family god has kept me as a housewife in this role i will do it as unto the lord so continue to work god wants faithful workers working in his vineyard and that is beautiful barzilla tells us that we are supposed to work that is the third category and the last and with that i close the first one was there were two people there shimai and ziba who are they worried a group the next one was mephibosheth who was waiting waiting didn't care about himself he was waiting the third category was barzilla and he was working and there was this guy in the 20th chapter first verse of second samuel sheba and this is the one and there happened to be there a rebel whose name was sheba and you will have to read a lot till the 20 was 21st verse in that 20th chapter and this guy wanted to overthrow king david with others the word rebel tells us everything and then you can go and read when you get time so he didn't accept david coming back he revolted and he didn't want him to be the king and as he rebelled finally in verse 22 he dies he dies of the of the same chapter verse 22 Then the woman in her wisdom went to all the people, and they cut off the head of Sheba and threw it out of Joab. So he dies. So what does Sheba tell us? That he was somebody in the category of without David, without the king, with no relationship. He was left out. He died. and there will be some people who will have no connection whatsoever and that is a dangerous situation to be in dangerous situation jesus christ is coming back it could be today it could be 10 years later it could be 100 years later nobody knows as i as i shared about revelation we did a bible study for about one and a half years the entire book of revelation But to just sum it up in 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 a, in in a nutshell, what is happening in the future? What is going to happen in the future? In the coming of Lord Jesus Christ, there are two parts. I've told it numerous times. The first part is the timing of His coming to take back His people. Who are His people? Whoever have expressed their faith in in what He has done. What He has done on the cross. whoever has expressed their faith respect of whichever country they belong to whichever religion they belong to but within their heart if they believed that yes he is the one who paid the penalty of sin the wages of sin is death he paid the price he paid the price of my sin i believe that he died on my behalf and i say lord forgive me take away my sin because you paid the price you are saved and for all such people he is getting ready to come and that time except god the father nobody knows it will happen when the trumpets are blown he will come and he will take the church and that day whenever it is the biggest breaking news ever this world will see the biggest breaking news across all channels will be crores of people are missing and nobody knows where they have gone yes literally and they are caught up and taken away and after which there will be a great tribulation of 7 years and then he will come back so in his second coming is two parts with the church or, or the ones who believed in him and there will be a thousand years of rule and all of that 
But the question for us today is, the first part of his second coming, if it happens, whenever, in which category will you be found? Of these four categories. Will you be worried? Will you be waiting? Will you be found working? Or will you be without? That is for you to introspect. Let us bow our heads in prayer. For the world that God gave us. When David returned as the king, not everybody was glad that he came back. Some of them were. I don't know about your situation, but you know about it. Can you just introspect yourself in the light of what you heard? And if God's word have spoken to you, if they've touched your heart, don't harden it. You are not stepping into a religion. You are not losing your freedom. In fact, you are receiving true freedom, true friendship, true joy. And it is not linked to any age. If you are convinced that Jesus died for your sin, he paid the price, then I just encourage you to say, Lord, come into my life. Wash away my sins. Cleanse me. Make me your child. Here I am. I give myself to you. A prayer of repentance. Not feeling sorry. Not being emotional. But you need to do it with all your heart if you are compelled within. And for a, a big number of people here, you've accepted him. But are you really waiting and watching and working for him? If you're not really working for him wherever you are, why don't you take this commitment and say, Lord, I want to be found working. There's so much of joy working for the kingdom. Wherever God has planted you and me, we need to work for him. We need to be that witness. We need to be that salt and light. Ask his help and say, Lord, I will always be prepared. Gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for giving us your word, as you always do. We know, O oh Master, that the coming of your dear son, Jesus, is way too close. There are so many signs that we are seeing, O oh Lord, that were written in the word are fulfilling. Help us always to be prepared so that we are not caught unaware. Help us to be found waiting and working. Thank you for each one who has prayed the prayer of commitment. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen.